Hi, I'm Zachary Lawaji, Precision A Consultant for CMB Operations, covering the Pipe Zone, Edgerton, and Laverne stores. And today, for this part of our video, I'll be talking about Auto Track Turn Automation. So, what is Auto Track Turn Automation? Auto Track Turn Automation is a solution from John Deere that provides accurate and repeatable end of pass turns throughout the entire field. It automatically creates the end of pass turn and carries out the end of pass functions, which I'll be talking about later on in this video. So, the way Auto Track Turn Automation works, is it creates a turn and then manages the implement using field and headland boundaries as a reference point. From there, the system utilizes the implement and machine dimensions to accurately guide the tractor and implement around an optimal end of pass turn. So what benefits does auto tractor and automation provide for an operation? Well, it gives the operator the ability to focus on the job to make necessary adjustments and better agronomic decisions on the go. It also gives them the ability just to watch what's happening with their tractor and the implement to be more proactive rather than reactive. It also gives them the ability to be more efficient and provide more repeatable end of pass turns. So what does it take to make auto tractor and automation works? Well first we need a compatible tractor and implement, a Starfire 3000 or 6000 receiver, a 4600 command center with a version 2 processor or a 4640 universal display as well as the automation 4.0 activation or subscription. So what machines or tractors are compatible? You can see here on this slide that we got all our series tractors as well as going back to our 8030 and 9030 series tractors. Compatible implements include both rear mounted and towed row crop planters as well as tillage and fertilizer implements, small grain implements such as carts and drills as well as tow behind air carts. So as I mentioned earlier there are a list of controllable functions that AutoTrack Turn Automation is able to control and that includes the headland turn itself, both the infield and turn speed, the max engine speed, our SCVs, our front wheel assist, our differential lock, a rear or front PTO, and the three-point hitch. So now that I've kind of given you the basics of auto track turn automation, let's go out to the field and check out what's going on on the display. Auto track turn automation is an end of row or headland turn automation solution from John Deere. It can control both the tractor and the implement when entering a headland or end of pass turn. It allows the operator to focus and monitor other things while going through the field. Auto track turn automation, when bundled together with automation 4.0 activation from John Deere, that also includes Gen 4 machine sync, auto path, and auto track implement guidance, can help reduce operator stress and provide ease of mind throughout the season. So now let's hop in the cab and check out what auto track turn automation is all about. So now that we've jumped in the cab, we're gonna go ahead and get started setting up auto track turn automation. So to get started, we'll hit our menu button, go to applications, and click on auto track turn automation. And the first thing we want to do is we want to flip it to on in the top left corner. As you can see, our status bar up here in the top right corner has changed to not ready. So we'll go ahead and click on that. It actually provides me a, a list of items that need to be completed before I can use auto track turn automation. So starting out on this list, the first item I need to complete is my field boundary information or to find my headland boundary size. And actually I can go ahead and click on this yellow shortcut button which will bring me right to that page. From there I want to go ahead and click on exterior under boundaries and then click the pencil or the edit button on exterior which then brings up the menu where I can either edit my boundary or edit the headland. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, a constant offset as my headland today or else I could use a top and bottom offset or end to end and define which ends I want, I'm going to be turning around on. But as I stated I'll be using a constant offset. And since I'm using a 60 foot wide implement or a 60 foot wide planter, I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a 120 foot headland as I usually make two passes around the edge of a field. Go ahead and click save, click okay. Then I can go ahead and exit out until I get back to my turn automation list. Now after completing my field boundary information, the next item is a guidance line, which I just selected a generic AB line. Headland sequences consist of both an enter and exit or essentially when I come in and go out of my headland. So to start, I'm gonna set up an enter. I can again click on that yellow arrow. And then I can see in the bottom left hand corner there is an add or new sequence button. So I'll go ahead and click. And then I have the ability to add a step. I'm then gonna go ahead and click on the add step button, which provides me a list of the controllable functions for turn automation. So today with a planner, I'm gonna go ahead and use three different functions, which include the front wheel assist, differential lock, and SCV1. So I'm going to start with my differential lock and, and since this is my enter function I'm going to want it to turn it off. 
So the next step is to tell the turn automation system when you want to execute this certain function. So for the differential lock, I actually want to make sure it's off before I start turning. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a negative 20 feet or 20 feet before I enter that headland. Go ahead and click OK. Then I'm going to add my next step, which I'm just going to set as my front wheel assist. Do the same thing, turn it off. And again, I'll just do negative 20 feet. Now the last step, I'm going to set as my SCV number one or my lift and lower for my implement. Since this is planting, I want to make sure that I enter my headland and I, I have full coverage going in. So I'm going to go ahead and choose extend to extend my cylinders and lift the planter. Then actually on this one, I'm going to enter in a positive 20 to make sure that I get full coverage up to that headland. Go ahead and click OK, hit next. The next step is just to name it, and I always just like to do something as simple as enter. Hit OK, and then just hit save. So I can now see that my next step is to enter an exit headland sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the yellow shortcut button again, click new sequence, and go ahead and add my steps. So do front wheel assist, turn it on. I'm going to do 20 feet past or 20 feet out of my headland. Okay. Do the same thing for my differential lock. I'm actually going to set it to auto. Same thing, 20 feet. And then for my planter, I'm going to go ahead and SCV1. I want to retract it to lower it. And to make sure I get full coverage again going out of the headland, I'm going to put in a negative 20 feet. So that means it's going to start lowering or start retracting my cylinders 20 feet before I exit my headland. Go ahead and hit OK. And go ahead and click Next. Same thing, just give it a name. I'm just going to name it Exit, hit OK, hit Save. And now I can see that I got green check marks and that my status is turned already. Now that I got my headland sequences done, the next step is to enter in a max turn and max infield speed. So max turn speed is just as it sounds. It's how fast or the, or the maximum speed um, that I want the tractor and machine to make as I'm making my headland turn. In this case, I'm going to set it for four miles per hour. And then infield speed is essentially the same thing, but what, while I'm going up and down through the field. And in this case, since we are in a rough frozen field, I'm just going to use five miles per hour. So after entering in our max turn and max infield speeds, I'm going to go ahead and click on start turn. So this is the position of where the tractor and implement are going to start executing my enter headland function. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it at zero, so that means as soon as I hit my headland, I'm going to start my enter sequence. The last item on this list is turn aggressiveness. Turn aggressiveness determines the shape of the turn path. Increasing this value results in a sharper turn, and decreasing this value results in a wider turn. In this case, I'm actually going to use 115. Now that I got everything entered in and my status is, has a green dot or a ready, I'm ready to start using auto check turn automation in the field. So now that we're in the field, I want to point one thing out. So with our auto track turn automation on, we actually get this new module on our run page or our guidance page. If I go ahead and click this arrow, it's actually going to give me a preview of my turn. And I also have the ability to flip the turn the other way as well as skip passes. As you can see here, it's this case I'm skipping one pass and I can go up to as many as I want. But for today, I'm just going to go ahead and do a conventional turn. So now that we've got AutoTrack turn automation set up and we know which direction our turn is going, we can actually go ahead and start using it. So I'm going to put our tractor in gear here, speed it up, and enable AutoTrack, and hit my resume button. As you can see, I just hit my enter sequence. We're just going to start making our turn here. And now our SCV number one is activated and our implement is being lifted up. And as we make our way going the other direction, we will hit our exit sequence. We'll then lower our implement and kick on our front wheel assist and differential lock again. So today I've talked about what AutoTrack turn automation is, how it works, 
and the benefits it can provide to an operation. If you have any more questions on off-track turn automation, feel free to give your local Precision Aid consultant a call or reach out to our support center. Thank you.